Greetings, I'm Lee, your humble game master, and I am an archaeologist. This is a retrospective look at my recent experience with the old school renaissance. See, I never grew up in that classical age of gaming, that cradle of civilization over which Gygax was most exalted pharaoh. So I never had that moment in Stranger Things where I was a kid playing in my parents' base and playing Dungeons and Dragons with my buddies. I was born in 1982 and I didn't enter my early teens until the 90s and by then Dungeons and Dragons was already in its second edition. So I never grew up with a red box, white box, blue box, green box or first edition D&D, AD&D or whatever and to this day I don't really know the differences between them. What's more, the first games I picked up were games like Earthdawn, Call of Cthulhu and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplaying, which all had a very different feel to Dungeons and Dragons. My only knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons at that point was the old cartoon, uh, which I knew was based on a roleplaying game, but I couldn't tell you much more about it, except for this one guy, Venger, had one horn and he really hated this little like uh, Dungeon Master guy, and there was this annoying unicorn. Uh, it was a good show, but uh, it was no Pirates of Dark Water. So when I finally came to D&D, it was in its third edition. I enjoyed it, or at least parts of it. It was a bit of a culture shock with the challenge ratings, armor classes, and ever-increasing levels, as well as arbitrary restrictions, but I had fun running it. I ran a fairly lengthy Forgotten Realms campaign, and a few shorter Ravenloft campaigns, but ultimately the rules and the design choices of D&D got in the way. And that, my friends, is where the archaeology begins. During my struggles with D&D, I became aware of something called the Old School Renaissance, particularly through Osric and Castles and Crusades. These games, using the open game license, stripped down 3rd edition Dungeons and & Dragons and rebuilt it in the style of older versions of D&D, taking liberties here or there, but ultimately cloning the designer's preferred version of the Dungeons & Dragons experience. I picked up these games, uh, like artifacts of old, or at least replicas thereof, intrigued Ultimately though, I, I didn't use them. I read through them and then I stuck on my shelf stuck them on my shelf and just got on with other games. I just didn't understand them. These games strangely took pride in being obtuse or difficult. And what's more, explanations of how to play these games were mired in dismissive attitudes towards younger modern gamers. I couldn't find an explanation of what old school was that didn't just tell you what it wasn't. But my curiosity was piqued. Uh, I ignored these relics of a bygone age until I started making YouTube videos where I came across some rather interesting folk who actually had a passion for old school games that fired up that curiosity again. And I had uh, exciting names thrown around like Basic Fantasy, Labyrinth Lord, Adventurer, Conqueror and King, Dungeon Crawl Classics and the amazingly named Lamentations of the Flame Princess. I picked up a handful of these and my delving into a bygone age began again. Reading through these games didn't really provide me with any knowledge. Again, here was the bravado and machismo of uh, an ancient past. But through watching videos from Ivan Mike 1968 and Jason from Dark Age of Roleplay Games, I learned more uh, and I eventually got invited by Ivan into a Lamentations of the Flame Princess game set in Prussia of the Thirty Years' War. It was an experience I did not expect. Here was I expecting dungeon crawls and death traps and what I got was a game that I could happily see running in, in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay or even one of the historical White Wolf settings. Not what I expected at all. In Ivan's game, and I'll put the link in uh, the description below to the first session, I play Dr. Hans Fliescher, formerly of Bremen, a failed medical student and dabbler in the dark arts. I imagine him looking something like Jack Rackham here from uh, Black Sails. Now the game didn't really support such a character in that I had no real medical skill, save for an anatomy skill that was sort of household and hand waved, and for all intents and purposes I was just a human wizard or magic user. But the game's rules like nature allowed me to roleplay this character and to explore his trials and tribulations. Joining me was Jason, who played Jürgen, a fanatical witch hunter, and Josh, who played Heinrich, an insane baker, and we were all humans. I also had the pleasure later on of participating in an ongoing game, a campaign of interconnected one-shots using basic fantasy, run by Jason of Dark Age of Roleplaying Game. Uh, again, I'll put some links below. 
Here I play Esme, a halfling rogue, and the experience is very different. It was a lot closer to what I had previously expected from what the old school experience is. Dungeon delving and hex crawling, random encounters. And now I enjoyed these games immensely and shared in some great roleplay moments. But it also highlighted to me throughout the experience, as well as reading around, reading other books and engaging in debates, what I thought were some of the less enjoyable or at least more difficult facets of old school gaming to appreciate. I learned something very quickly. The dice are not your friend. In fact, by some accounts, you should be avoiding rolling the dice at all costs. Your competency is very low in these games. And it comes across that action should be thoroughly described to remove all possibility of the dice getting involved. Indeed, as much as you can roleplay in these games, more often than not, these games are about player skill rather than character choices, or at least that's how the intent comes across. There's also this confusion, I think, between competency and difficulty. Like old school games seem to equate characters being useless at their professions with challenge. This, in combination with the dice, often make these games feel comical or farcical, with drama coming from failure rather than choice or productivity. The lack of skills or any real definition of character traits beyond combat, and to some degree magic and thieving, is both positive and negative. It's positive because you have a more freeform approach to defining your character, but it does lead to a lot of hand waving. Your character is a master blacksmith because you said he was, not through anything representative on the character sheet. This is more akin to improv, or let's pretend, in that there are no rules dictating what you can uh, or cannot be beyond your class and race. The downside is there's no way to meaningfully affect the game uh, side of things with character skills and abilities. It usually won't come up in a dungeon crawl, but uh, my doctor could have done with a few scholarly skills. It sounds like I had a negative experience, but really I haven't. I've come to appreciate both old school and modern games. I uh, appreciate their differences. I've also been inspired to look at running some old school games, but cannot resist tinkering with them to at least make them suitable to my tastes, but at least a little more. And that's their strength. They're easy uh, to modify. They're so simplistic that you can house rule them and the parts from one game or another are quite interchangeable. So you can make any game something more like what you want to run. I also love uh, the sense of an emergent story rather than a pre-planned one. The story of your characters evolve as they move around in an ever-reactionary world. This isn't unique to old school games, but these games are strongly built on this idea and player agency and choice are very strongly hardwired into these games. I've also met some great people trying these games out, and although I can come across as a little bit dismissive uh, to these games, and perhaps a little bit salty, I genuinely enjoy my experience with them, uh, and indeed, some of the shortcomings I find with these games are the same as those that have been expressed by those who actually love them. And so, that is my first dig into some old school archaeology. I hope to do this again as my experience with old school games develops, and perhaps one day share some ideas of my own as I branch out into maybe running one of these games. I'm still a modern gamer for the most part, with a love for story, in-depth characters and heavy roleplay, but elements of this can be found in old school games, and it's important to understand how and where these games differ to the ones I'm used to. Well, I'll see you in Tannis with the staff of Ra next time, but until then, have a great game.